Welcome to VEX 101. So today we're talking about standoffs. Now standoffs are a glorified spacer, if you will. Uh, what's great about them is they have threaded sections on them, uh, and those threaded sections, depending on which size you're dealing with, uh, will actually dictate you know, what you can and can't do with them. So here our smallest one is gonna be a half inch, so we've got one inch, two inch, and three inch. Those are the pretty much the standard ones that you'd find in a VEX pack. Um, and then you've got multiple sizes, I think they go all the way up to 12 inches. And these we found are a little more expensive, uh, they're great for some applications, but most of the time we just use multiple of these all set up. Now one thing that's really important to know about these two smaller sizes is that they have threads all the way through, you actually see through both of these. So you can have a screw go all the way through um, if needed, or you could have a screw go a lot further in one side as needed. So these will be something to be thinking about if you're trying to go all the way through and almost use them as a spacer. Uh, sometimes they're really great for a very permanent like spacer where you go in there and you tighten it down really, really strong onto a C-channel um, because it can go all the way through. Now with these other ones, you're dealing with limited thread. So it's actually thread for a little while and then it stops. Um, and so you wanna make sure that when you put a screw in here, you actually have the one that's gonna fit. So you can see we have an array of screws over here. Uh, and most of the time, if I'm just doing this attached to metal, what I'll do is I'll select this screw size. This is a, a 3 8 screw. And this is perfect for when you're working with metal. You can just take it, I put my finger through on it like that, take this one, and I just spin. Uh, and that'll give you enough distance. We had a, we had a bad situation at Worlds. Uh, one of these came loose um, and this bar eventually popped out of place because we used the little quarter inch screw. I like using the 3 8 screw so that we can make sure we've got a little extra thread to hold on just in case. But inside, if I chose a longer screw, what would happen is this would eventually max out. It would eventually stop out and so it would hit right there and it's only gonna go in half an inch. And so because of that, you know, as you're, as you're building, you wanna make sure that you have to get the correct size screw. Standoff connectors, there's two different sizes. There's the half inch one and there's the one inch one. And depending on which ones you buy and when you buy them, bottoms are normal. And then this one's actually a star drive and this one's a hex. So you just gotta be able to, you know, know which one you're working with and when you wanna tighten them. Um, one of the things when I do connect is I'll take one, I'll put it in just a little bit, kind of make sure it's seated in there. Uh, and then uh, once I've got it seated in there, I'll make sure that I take the other one and I'll take my finger and I'll just press along the middle so it holds that other one in place. So I know this is not turning. And then once they kind of both get there, I'll spin them both in a direction and tighten that up as much as I can. Like we said earlier, if you're using the one inch or half inch standoff, you can actually use a long screw and go all the way through it and stick out the other side, and then you can connect another one onto that if needed. Some of the different ways to tighten your standoffs. So one of the ones is we just take it and just do it by hand. This will come into play when we start talking about uses for standoffs in just a moment. But you can just take it, tighten it by hand, and that's gonna be on there, it's gonna be pretty secure. Um, if you wanna tighten it even further, uh, one of the recommendations is just grab an open-ended wrench. It took us a long time to figure out that's for caps, nuts, and nylock, and that's for standoffs. So you can actually just grab on there, and ratchet down. Sometimes it'll actually slip, so you can actually see when there's damage on some of these where they've gone and they've you know tried to wrench it down and it'll come off. So just make sure you're all the way seated when you're tightening that. And you don't even need a wrench on the other side most of the time. You can actually just tighten it without having to do any extra tools. You just wrench that one side down. Another way to tighten these and to make sure that they actually are gonna work for a long period of time in that one position is to use kind of like a, a magnetic driver, a nut driver like this, um, that's actually intended for those bits. So those hex bits that drop in here, they actually fit quarter inch, boom. And I can take this and I can twist that and I can turn that really, really tightly and that's gonna stay. Now this is great for obviously the one side um, and let's say you're building a chassis and this needs to be, it's gonna be where there's a lot of parts and you're not gonna be able to access this after you've put other different mechanisms on here, then this would be recommended for you to go in, you can tighten it, and that, that screw is less likely to go and then you'll have the one on the outside that's easier, more frequent to fail, you can easily tighten that one. So on this crazy build, you'll actually see this standoff is in between creating a spacer in between these two pieces of C-channel. Uh, and this one's not as easy to access from here, uh, but this one might be a little more accessible. So what you wanna do is, I like applying my finger to one side, 
tightening this side. So if this is getting loose, right, as you tighten one side, the other side will get looser. So you want to just commit, I'm going to commit to one side being the tight side. And so I'll tighten that one side so I know this is tight. And then this will have a space now and I'll tighten from here in order to get this to actually sit down. So if I'm trying to like tighten it just by hand in the middle, what's gonna happen is it'll just start spinning and then one of these is becoming loose, one of them might be coming tight and they might oscillate which one grabs, which one doesn't. So if you're doing something like this and it's in a tight spot, get your finger inside there, tighten this and then tighten the other way. When we're building a chassis and we have to use a spacer um, included with the standoff, then what we'll do is we'll put the screw here and we'll put the spacer on the inside. Uh, that way, that screw, like we said, like that one's gonna be the one that's like good to go, not gonna cause any problems, but we have the screw out here will just be a screw. So when we're trying to take apart the chassis, fix a motor, fix a wheel or something, and put it back on, we don't have to worry about, you know, oh wait, gotta put the spacer in there as well put the spacers and all that stuff on the inside where you're not gonna mess with it and it's as solid as possible. And then on the outside, you just have one screw to worry about. You don't have to have a whole lot of other stuff going on. So we're gonna talk about funky uses for standoffs. There's a bunch of them out there. People are getting more and more creative. These are one of the most versatile things to use, but we'll talk about a couple of them. Here's one of them here, where we're just using it as an appendage, if you will. It's just kind of sticking out and then we have this pneumatics zip tied to it. So it's just a support arm sticking straight out. In the Vex game, nothing but net. You can see on this robot, we've got standoffs everywhere. Uh, standoffs were used to you know, keep metal up and away, to hold plexi a certain distance. Um, it was even placed at certain angles in order to get just the right compression in order to shoot the balls the right distance. On a lift, you can actually have this kind of stick out, and then as the lift is coming down, you put a limit switch on there, and then have this trigger the limit switch. Since most of the time, you can't just move your little lift arm in the way of the tower. And so, this will have an extra little bit that sticks out, and then the limit switch will actually come down and strike this. So that's one way to do that. One of the other great tricks with standoffs is that you can actually take a shaft collar and remove the set screw. And because of that, you can actually go in and put in a standoff connector like using the half inch ones for this, set that in. And then so now, start threading this. Again, the same technique, I'm just kind of stick my finger in there. You can see we've got a little bit of that, so we'll spin that out and try to get that just right. So that we can take a screw and set the screw all the way through. So now, we tighten it up. We've got a 90 degree angle, and this angle can be used for, uh, we've seen them on four bars this year. We've also seen them in nothing but net when they were just tightening things, and it was just a lot easier to use a lot less metal, go straight up and just go over. We don't need all the C-channel in order to make that bend happen. We can just go up this way, and then we're set to go with a 90 degree angle created from standoffs. Because of the ease of actually getting your fat hands, I got my, my chubby fingers, uh, to get onto this, um, sometimes we just use it as a, as a thumb screw. Uh, so we'll just take a standoff, put it in there, and tighten it down, and maybe you just wanna lock in. We've done it with our brain. Um, you just attach the brain in there between there, take this, tighten it down, lock it in, uh, and that way you can easily take it off, move it, uh, and readjust. It's great for also testing. You just take it, tighten it on there, like, hold on, let's just see what we got, and kind of working with that. Short little standoff and a big spacer out here that changes the diameter. So if we put rubber bands on here, we're working with lift arms and the linkage. We're gonna have to put rubber bands and it's less likely for it to pop out over here on the side. You can see on this example of the nothing but net robot where we use standoffs to go straight up. And because we only needed that one hole, we used a pillow block and we used spacers and we attached it so that this axle could slide right through. So the side roller intake, uh, we could see right here, that it's actually hooked up. Uh, the rubber bands are actually attached to the standoff. And so once the rubber band starts moving, once the claw starts moving, it'll actually drop down and go from being in size and then it'll actually jump into being active. Uh, so these standoffs are great for just kind of holding things back for just a short moment until you need them to be activated in part of your robot. When using chain and you've got a little bit of slack in the chain, you can always take a standoff um, and set that in there. Uh, it might add a little bit of friction, but it is an idea, a way of kind of moving things around and readjusting and kind of picking up the slack when you're working with chain. One crazy idea was actually taking a standoff and taking a drill and drilling a hole into it uh, to go all the way through. And so now this becomes almost like a pipe. And so you're just drilling a hole through. And you can see in this example of how it was set up, I've been able to achieve an angle that wouldn't be achievable otherwise. Some of y'all have seen our Instagram feed, our competitive robotics clothing. If you haven't, there's some examples over here on the side. And if you want to go ahead and click up on the top link right there and get your own gear. 
Thanks for checking out this video about standoffs. If you haven't already watched the one about flat bearings, the one about motors, please do so. Subscribe and like, and we'll see you guys in the next one.